In 49 BC, when Julius Caesar and his legions crossed the Rubicon and invaded Rome, a civil war had begun. Indeed, contrary to how Shakespeare would have it, it was this, not Caesar's assassination, that had let slip the dogs of war. And in an era dominated by upstart warlords, it was Caesar who emerged once again triumphant. He defeated Pompey Magnus at Pharsalus in 48 BC, and forced Scipio's suicide a couple of years later. Except in Pompey's sons, who held out for a few more years in Spain, most of the rest of Caesar's enemies were, perhaps surprisingly, pardoned. Except one, Cato. Not for him Caesar's insulting leniency, as a master might forgive a slave, a king, his subjects. Instead, upon learning of Caesar's final victories, Cato had plunged a dagger into his own stomach, although it wasn't this that had killed him. His friends, finding the old man lying unconscious and covered in blood, had stitched together his gaping wound and revived him, only for Cato to promptly pull apart the stitches and rip out his own entrails. That is how a true Roman should behave, and the citizens of Rome thought so too. When Caesar arrived back in Rome and paraded the fruits of his triumphs throughout the capital, the float that displayed Cato's suicide drew not howls of mocking laughter, as it was hoped, but genuine tears. It was a conspicuous blunder on Caesar's part, and it brought shame upon those craven senators that had accepted Caesar's clemency in the first place. It was not enough to resist the general, not yet. Instead, a compliant senate voted him ever-increasing honours. He had been made dictator in 48 BC for one year, then in 46 BC for another ten. In 44 BC, he was elected dictator for life. He was allowed to wear the triumphal laurel wreath whenever he liked. Luckily, this also covered his bald patch, and built a triangular pediment onto his house to make it look like a temple, i.e. the home of a god. Hilariously, he was also made Rome's prefect of morals. Perhaps it was Caesar's new habit of wearing large red boots that spurred the conspirators to action. Red boots had long been associated with monarchy in the Roman imagination. Or the fact that his name had appeared on the calendar. But at some point, the levy breaks. On the 15th of March, 44 BC, Julius Caesar attends a meeting of the Senate. As the attendees gather to greet the dictator, someone pulls at his robe. A dagger strikes down, then several more. In all, around 23 cuts are made to Caesar's face, neck and body. But he's still alive. He sees his friend Brutus and stretches out his arms. Brutus, yes, previously an enemy, but Caesar had pardoned him. Perhaps the rumours had been true. Brutus really was Caesar's son. But Brutus was also Cato's nephew. And he too held a knife. Caesar did not say et tu, Brute. He said, Kai su, Taknon. It was Greek. It meant, you too, my child. Thanks for listening. If you like this, subscribe and hit the notification bell.